Okay, so the 2019 paper, question four. There are different definitions for acids and bases. First one asks you to give the bronsted lowry definition for a base, which is quite simply that a base will accept a proton. Okay, and so you might have written a proton acceptor or whatever. Okay, lots of different ways you could get that. Check marks if you're not sure. Okay, uh, solution of hydrogen peroxide contains two acid conjugate base pairs. So let's try and figure out which one goes with which. Okay, here is our hydrogen peroxide. So if you look at the peroxide and find something on the other side where it has either gained or lost a proton, um, here we go, here it has lost. So we can say for sure this is the acid and here is our conjugate base. Okay, so that leaves us with our other pair, okay, which is the water and the hydronium. And we look for which one has donated and which one um, is then the base. So the one that can donate is this one. And we are left with our conjugate base here. And that's it. So pick whichever pair you want, make sure you filled in. Okay. Another definition for acids and bases is, was proposed by Gilbert Lewis. A Lewis acid is a substance that can accept a pair of non-bonded electrons, or non-bonding electrons, sorry, and a Lewis base is a substance that can donate a pair of non-bonding. Example of a Lewis acid base reaction is shown. Explain why it's a Lewis acid base reaction. Okay. Explain means you're going to have to do a little bit more detail than just we've got one accepting and one donating. Okay, you're going to have to give the species. So here are our two things in the reaction. So what we need to say is which one has donated a pair and which one has um, accepted the pair. Okay, so the accepting has happened here because this has been converted to this and it's taken on a uh, lone pair from the oxygen's here, okay, and this one has donated. Okay, so you're going to have to mention both of these species in your answer, and that this one has that this one has um, accepted, this one has donated, okay. Right, and then we've got some data on strong and weak acids. We've got information on it. Uh, so what we've got to describe the relationship between the number of chlorine atoms in an acid molecule and the strength. Okay, so we've got ethanoic with no chlorines. Uh, chloroethanoic with one, dichloro and trichloro. So we've got an increasing number of um, chlorines this way. Okay, we've got our dissociation constant um, on this side. Now, if you remember for dissociation, okay, so we've got our, um, so this is our ions over our molecular, basically. Okay, so the bigger this is, the more of this we have. So the smaller this is, okay, the better the dissociation has been. Okay, so if we have a higher, as I say, higher level at the bottom, so we've got more of the molecular, then we've got a weaker acid. And if we've got more on the top, then we've got a stronger acid, because these are the ones that are ionising off. So basically, the bigger that your Ka gets, so the, the bigger that your um, numerator becomes, then the stronger your acid is becoming. Okay, here is your biggest number, here is your smallest number. So as you increase the number of chlorine ions, you increase, or chlorines, sorry, not chlorine, chlorine atoms, so be very careful about that actually. Um, so as you increase the number of chlorine atoms, you are increasing the strength of the acid. Or you could say as you decrease the number of chlorines, you decrease the strength of the acid, okay? But you must talk about chlorine atoms and the strength of the acid. That's what the question requires, okay? Right, we've got a wee calculation. Okay, so 1.89 grams of chloroethanoic acid was dissolved in deionized water. A solution was made up to 750 in a volumetric. You've got to calculate the concentration and then we've got to calculate the pH, okay? Right, sorry, I'm just finding my scribbly bits that I'd noted down. Okay, so concentration in moles per litre is reasonably easy. Okay, we've got uh, 1.8 grams of your CH2ClCOOH. Okay, go off to the formula mass of this. So I'm assuming we can work a formula mass reasonably well. It should have 94.5. Okay, so our moles mass divided by formula mass, so 1.8 over 94.5. I'm just keeping that in my calculator, but feel free to write it down if you wish to hear. 
Okay, and then you're going for concentration is moles over volume. So my moles I'm just taking from there, just keeping it in my calculator, and 0 0.08. Okay, because they've told you moles per litre to the minus one here, you don't actually have to write it down the bottom, but you know, you can if you wish. But if you put it in, you've got to get it right. Okay, right, so then using your answer, calculate the pH. Right, so that's the bit that becomes a little bit more tricky. I think I've got enough space over here. Right, so worth two marks. Obviously, when I've clipped these, I've not left the same spaces. So we are looking at the dichloroethanoic. So we're going to need that Ke, okay? So, uh, so the chloroethanoic. Um, so we're going to need the Ke. The Ke here is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, you go to your data book. You look up what equations can get you this. And frankly, I want to use this one pH equals a half pKa minus a half log C. Okay, because I've got concentration. It's a nice straightforward one, that one. As soon as you plug everything in, it all works. My problem is that I'm on Ka and I need a pKa. Okay, so basically I'm. this is the same thing as hydrogen ions and pH kind of thing. So we're looking for the negative log. So, oh, sorry. I just realised I'm not writing down the right thing here. Uh, I'm going chloroethanoic. Sorry, scribble this out. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Right, okay. Let's read. Um, so we've got 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3. We're looking for the negative log of that, and that gives you 2.80. Okay, right, so I've now got pKa. Now that one is much easier, because I'm just doing a half times 2.8 minus a half log of 0.08. Okay, plug it all in, careful with your brackets, and it will give you 1.95. The actual answer in the mark scheme was 2. Okay, it would accept 1.95. So, yeah, quite a bit of work. There are other ways you could run it round, but I think that's the easiest. Okay, the most straightforward. Okay. Right, we hit one of these horrible three markers. Discuss the role of acids and bases in pH indicators and buffer solutions. Um, it is a knowledge of chemistry one. So it's basically a case of making sure you put down everything you know <laughs> about anything to do with indicators and buffers and you explain what's going on. Okay, so the role of acids and bases, I would split it into two parts. Firstly, in indicators and then in buffers. Okay, so in indicators, I'm expecting you to explain your kind of dissociation of your hydrogen ions and your indicator ions and the fact that these are different colours as uh, so you colour one here and colour two here okay and that the point at which this dissociation happens okay um, this point where it shifts which would be the um, pk end which you can get out of, you know, that's also in your data book, okay, that that shift is allowing you to explain what's going on, okay. Um, that's probably going to be worth, you know, kind of, well, half the marks in this really, to be honest, except you don't get half marks. So you're going to have to talk about that as far as indicators. In buffers, you're going to have to, that's going to take up the majority of what you're going to talk about, because buffers, you want to talk about the fact that you've got your reservoirs. Now you can talk about your acids, and your bases. Um, but I would go with acids first and then kind of basically just relate it then back to bases as well. Okay, so your reservoirs that we're looking at here, you need to have your um, acid. So let's make it very clear, weak acid. Okay, so something like, for example, always the one that we give. Okay, your ethnoic acid and your hydrogen kind of dissociation. And then it's salt. Okay, now the salt here, let's go for sodium ethanoate, which dissociates completely into your ethanoate ion and your sodium ion. Okay, now the reservoirs that you need to explain are this one here and this one here. Okay, so what you have is you have an acid ion, your, well, your um, hydrogen, your proton. Um, and anything, any base reaction with this, which removes it from the solution, will be offset by uh, this equilibrium. Okay, 
um, because there's plenty of this acid over here, it will just replace it. Okay, um, so that's your acid base part of that. And then you've got the, the opposing side as well, that if you increase the, the hydrogen ion, then you'll remove it using this reservoir back to the, the molecular. Okay, you just kind of do that. So if you have this in, you would then want to also talk about the bases. And for the bases, I would use ammonia. Okay, um, and your ammonium salt. Right, um, as I say, that one's a tricky one for me to write lots about, but we can come back to it if you need me, okay?